know, as a child, uh, one of my favorite novels was Alice in Wonderland. And that quote which stayed with me was, you know, when the wizard tells Alice that if you don't know where you're going, any road is going to take you there. So today, I hope to take us all on a journey of imagination for what credit line on UPI could be. I may state it as it will be, but that only reflects the passion or the very strong belief that we as Zeta already come into it. But it's certainly a journey of imagination that I wish to take all of us on. Right? Uh, I think Saurabh set the, set the stage perfectly by talking about what UPI uh, on credit or credit on UPI as they're calling it is. And I think very, very forward-lookingly, visionary-wise, NPCI has defined the credit line on UPI as a platform, as an enabler. They have not actually gone out and defined it as a particular product that we should. So what could we, the banks, everyone, do with it? That's essentially the agenda of the next 20 minutes that I hope to spend with all of you. Look at the past. In the past, until even the last decade, customers went to a branch whenever they needed to bank. But today, all banking is done digital. It is available anywhere and everywhere on your fingertips. This change has happened in our lifetime in front of us for all to see. However, when we look at the process of taking a loan, it still seems to be, for most part, stuck in the previous era. You still have to undergo fairly tedious work in order to get that loan. And will this not go through the change? I strongly believe that in the future, even all credit is going to flow like water. It's going to be available where you want it, when you want it, and how you want it. Right. In coming up with that, I think Parag already spoke about the role that digital public infrastructure is playing. And we can start seeing glimmers of that with how digital lending share has actually been increasing. Right? In the last five years, the digital lending has grown three times faster than overall lending as such. And by 2026, we think it's going to reach almost 20% of overall lending is going to be digital. This is before credit line on UPI came. Credit line on UPI is going to fundamentally change the game. Also, a fairly major part is being played by the digital public infrastructure. On the origination side, we see frictionless credit, we see the public credit registry come in and so on. All of which is going to make access to credit much easier. But the distribution, the likes of Oken are also going to evolve and mature, but it is going to be dominated by UPI. So the journey that I want to speak to you about is an exploration of this statement that we believe that credit line on UPI is a once in a generation opportunity that all of us have that is going to change the credit landscape in India. And by the way, this is happening the second time. UPI already happened. There was a time when I would go and withdraw money from the ATM and run all my monthly expenses. Today, I make UPI transactions. I'm sure that's the story with all of us. This journey already happened. This is its second coming. And we strongly believe this is going to happen again. As we consider this journey, I want us to consider just the size of this market. We believe that by 2030, this is going to be a trillion dollar spend that we will see in India. UPI today is already, by the way, $3 trillion was spent in India today. By 2030, even conservative estimates is $10 trillion. It's extremely rational to believe, conservative even to believe that about a trillion dollars or 10% of that is actually going to be driven by credit, given the underpenetrated, even what the keynote spoke about, etc. On this journey, what do we need to actually consider? The imagination is, I want to share with you my top seven considerations. This could be a world, or in our belief, it is going to be the world of what happens or what changes in the credit line on UPI world and what happens when it comes. The first and foremost, one of the first things that we need to understand, at least my takeaway has been that credit line on UPI is not a product. NPCI has been very careful not to define it as anything. They said the issuer, the bank can do what they want. It's not a product. It is a distribution superhighway. The product can be defined by each bank. You could take all your existing products 
and link it up to UPI as is where it is today. By the way, that will give you immense cost savings just on your loan management because UPI already provides repayment facilities. Do nothing, take your current loan portfolio, link it up to UPI and allow users to repay their loans via the UPI network. As is where is it is enabled. It's now for the banks to step up and take that up forward. So banks may start by launching a specific product, but eventually all the products, all the credit products coming out of the bank are going to be linked to UPI. This is a firm belief and it has to be. Just as when we open a branch, the, the discussion does not come with which one product to put through the branch. We say all the products will go. Similarly, UPI comes with the same flavor. The credit line on UPI comes with the same flavor. All products have to eventually come there. So the first thing of thinking differently is not to think of it as a product, but as a distribution channel. Because everything about how you are going to go after it is going to be different if you change the thinking. The second thing is UPI is an inherently digital ecosystem. Everything about UPI is digital. You can only access it on your phone. Your onboarding is digital. Your even dispute resolution is digital. Everything about UPI is digital. This is what consumers in India are used to. They don't know any other world when it comes to UPI. If we suddenly ask the customer of UPI to show up at a branch or call phone banking or so on, anything, it may not go down well at all. How are we going to prepare for an inherently digital ecosystem? Would taking my current product and linking it as is or taking an LMS or designing products, will that be enough? This is the second question that we have to think about. So to us, the answer is that banks have to think about designing their credit line on UPI channel to be digital first, to be a digital native and fundamentally a consumer or customer first channel. And frankly, all of our bank systems are built to be bank first and with a purpose for the era in which they were built, that is the right purpose that they serve. Today, as we morph into this, what is the new purpose that they ought to serve is a consideration we have to think about. So that's my second consideration for us. The third consideration is just imagine the way origination can change. How does origination work today? I, am, I may be an existing customer of the bank, but when I want a loan, I go to the bank. I apply for a loan. The bank underwrites me. Maybe I'm pre-approved, but there's still a process by which they underwrite me. They disburse the loan to me, and then the process is complete. If I want a new loan after three years, I again go back. Again, the process repeats. So the multiple products are sold individually by pull or push to customers. Now imagine what can a credit line change this perspective completely to be. In a credit line, the bank needs to give me a credit line once. Once I have an active credit line, anytime I want a loan, today I want to go buy a TV, the bank would give me a consumer durable loan at, I don't know, 14% interest. The credit line, that transaction can be at 14% interest. Tomorrow, I wish to do festive shopping with my family. You could give me my 18% personal loan like equivalent via the same credit line. There is no further interaction. The credit line is actually a permanent, lifelong, active line to the customer. It's a real linkage. One of the big problems we have is banks and customers don't engage as much. Uh, this solves for that in a very big way. So the focus of origination may change from trying to just give them a line or underwrite, etc., to saying, let me establish this one link, because this means that I am permanently in touch and I can always keep giving multiple products. The other imagination I have is we are going to see a lot of the existing products be bundled with credit lines. And this is my favorite. I had a, I had a loan as a, as a student from my from a particular bank, they did give me a very nice option to say that we'll also pay for your living expenses. But I spent four months, four, sorry, four hours every month going to the branch, collecting that amount, and then coming back to the extent I stopped after a while. But imagine how easy it should be now to connect, to bundle an education loan with a living expenses top up. That just works. Already, I think the bankers obviously know the numbers by heart the utilization of your sanction limit is sort of a problem. This is another thing that helps you increase the utilization. It's an option. An option call is always better. There's no expense. As a student, as a consumer, I don't need to think about if I want it, I can take it. It's always nice. Uh, 
Similarly, it could work in the agri sector. You've given me an agricultural loan, which is very specific, end use based. You could also give me a consumables loan as a top up. You could do this for housing to say, here's an interiors loan, so on. The options are endless. Every single end use based product could have an appropriate end use top up that is on demand that is available. This is another uh, imagination that we believe its time has to come. I will go forward. Let's also think about the kind of exponential volume that this is going to bring. By the way, this story already happened as well, right? When UPI came, I think today we can say that maybe we were not as prepared for the volume that UPI threw at us. You know, the same me who would withdraw once a month, so one ATM transaction, now started paying with UPI. I probably replaced it with 300 UPI transactions. The various CIOs around here are now upset. The one is to 300 ratio that has now come. Right? And no benefit, by the way. Right? So that, that whole story happened. Today, UPI credit is now coming. Will it not repeat? And the way the protocols are defined, they are consumer first, customer first. They allow a customer, let's say I have three bank lines, bank credit lines. I go and link them to my favorite payment app. Once I've linked them, whenever I'm attempting a transaction, uh, that payment app is going to query each of the three banks to check if that particular transaction is eligible for a loan or on that. Which means my bank is not receiving a workload only when I do a transaction. It is going to receive a workload every time anyone does a transaction as long as they've linked you up. Are we prepared for that? What when the user tries to take a convert an EMI? The key facts have to be presented. I mean, as we get into some of the details, we fundamentally see at least a 100x increase in real time volume that's going to hit the banks. This is Greenfield, a new opportunity. Are we prepared for it? Is a worry or from our perspective and very exciting thing because we believe that, that we will handle it well. The partner ecosystem. I think the banks have done a great job of developing partners, right? Co-brand cards, potentially co-lending is a smaller option, but that option fully exists in the credit card space, right? It's worked well, it's worked as a sourcing partner. It, credit line, the same thing could apply again, but you need to be ready from it from day one. You have to design products that can be done as that. Are we ready for that ecosystem? That's, that's yet another question that we think about and try to uh, find that there are no great answers already. We finally want to leave you with a thought that what credit line is doing the six points that I covered essentially are all the same. That the reason we are excited, the reason we are holding this event, etc., is because we fundamentally believe that the way Credit Line has been defined as an ecosystem platform, it's going to be a breeding ground for innovation. There is no particular area that it's going to leave out. You could think about just the rails are so flexible that you can design any product. You can think about this impacting any part and every part of the credit value chain as we see it today. For example, take the repayment schedule. Bulk of India does not receive salary monthly. Yet, 100% of EMIs are monthly payment schedules. Why? There's no great reason, by the way. It's just the way it is. But with credit line, I can, yeah, there are good reasons. The operations folks in the room will say, hey, I cannot collect so frequently. But with UPI, digital payment, digital repayments coming in. If I'm going after the gig economy who gets paid weekly, why can't I set up a weekly schedule or on-demand schedule, you pay and so on. The options just on what you could do with repayments and reimagine what repayments are going to be like will be very different. Imagine subvention. All of us who dealt with subvention know how you can only go after it merchant by merchant by merchant and probably not more merchants because it becomes too complex to handle today. That's, that's just the way the systems are set up. But when the network itself, and UPI, allows an open network-based subvention, the possibilities now become endless. You could theoretically go, my next door stationery store, next door Panwala, hyper-local brand partners is a possibility because it doesn't cost me either effort or bandwidth or thinking time to go after creating a very large, vibrant partner ecosystem. So that's the kind of change. Take any part, pricing, take the way you do your personalized offers to individuals. All of that can now be revisited on the back of these rails. 
earlier the systems and importantly the network did not support it as much right so these are some of my you know immediate thoughts that you know when we started thinking about this we started coming up with this and i want to leave you with a final parting thought one of the aspects about the way credit line is defined is there's a in or there's a innocuous api call there which says that whenever a transaction is being attempted the tpap is going to check with the issuer whether that transaction is allowed and get the details of that product at that point which means you can price the transaction in the moment you don't have to provide the same 18% interest to every single transaction that comes back there is absolutely no requirement from npci or the way the protocol is defined depending on i am in chroma or oh, i must be buying a consumer durable let me give him 12% or oh, you're doing a general purpose let me take 24% you could take it how you want however you want so that rule engine etc can be defined and react this leads to an interesting point every transaction yes is a pricing opportunity and there's a immediate question are we prepared to take advantage of this possibility are our systems there etc is an obvious question but here's a prediction about what will happen is in the future banks are going to be competing for every transaction it's no longer enough to say that here's a product go use it what is the product there's no product there is customer a sivram is standing in a store he's attempting a transaction just as today in a chroma i have a bajaj finser and a you know different other banks since most of you are in the room but different other banks approach me to sell me that product that competition is shifting onto the network onto digital my systems are now going to the tpap is going to query every single bank every bank bank 1 bank 2 bank 3 has an opportunity to come and offer their best offer the user chooses or potentially the tpap chooses based on the features they put etc which one to use for that transaction so every bank this is both i mean this is just a new paradigm that will surely come from our perspective in the near future the smaller banks who don't have the distribution muscle can now focus on one thing let me try a way to get this lifeline permanent lifelong line to the customer because now i am in the consideration set every time the customer transacts and how badly i want that customer depends and i can choose on that by the way this also means one more thing that i don't only get my transaction data i also get the user's transaction data legitimately because i may have lost the bid but i got that data let's say bank a bank b i am bank a both of them queried i lost the bid but i know he attempted such a transaction or most probably must have imagine how we could use this data to enrich our knowledge about the customer how we could profile them etc are we ready for that the question and with this thought uh i ask all of us how are you all how are we all preparing for the future my the next session at least what is zeta doing to prepare for this future is what the content of the next session is going to be thank you very much